So in this uh, video, I want to just give an example of what overfitting is and also show how to detect it. Uh, and in order to do that, I'm going to use um, a polynomial fit, so nonlinear regression. Uh, remember, we've looked before at how to use uh, the first two terms in linear regression to fit something. And now I want to demonstrate overfitting just by including some more terms uh, here. So I took some uh, data from uh, the linear regression video here. So that is exactly the same. Uh, and I divided up into uh, an X and Y data set and, and plotted here. So this is exactly what uh, we had before. And so now I want to use a, uh, a tool in NumPy um, to, to, to use polynomial regression. So I'm not really going to implement polynomial uh, or nonlinear regression from scratch because it's not really something we're going to use. It's just a, a tool to show, to demonstrate overfitting. So let me uh, import NumPy as NP and load that in. And then uh, I'm going to find the weights uh, with this uh, function from NumPy called polyfit. Uh, and so that takes uh, the x and y values, and then I have uh, to give it the uh, how many terms basically I want uh, in this. And so if I put in 1, that includes the, the first two terms. So that's just a, a linear fit. So that's a very quick way to get the weights. And then to uh, predict my y's, I can define this function here. Uh, and so another numpy function um, called poly1d. Uh, and so that takes the weights and, uh, and, and generates a polynomial function like this here. So my y predicted uh, I can now compute by feeding the x values uh, to my function here. And uh, then I can plot that. So uh, I plot now the x values and my y predicted. And let's see, I just mistyped plot. And then I get a straight line here. You can see the, the polynomial fit. Uh, so I might be able to get a, a better fit uh, now simply by, for example, also going up here and including quadratic terms here. And so you can see now that the, the line is slightly different. We can compute the error to see if it indeed goes down. So that's just going to be our, our typical um, error here. So we subtract y predicted from y. And then uh, we print the L2 loss. So that's just a half times um, the mean of the error squared. Like this. Uh, so that's, that's our L2 loss. Uh, so if I go back to 1, it's 0.28. If I include more terms, it goes down a little bit to 0.26. If I use a, a third degree polynomial, it goes down a little bit, and so forth. Uh, and so uh, to show you overfitting, right, let's go up and include nine terms here. Right, and so if I do that, uh, you can see the error is tiny, uh, right? It's three, it's four times 10 to the minus 20th, right? And you can see the line here goes through all the points. Uh, the problem is here that you that you have an overfit, and so I can demonstrate that uh, by including the values, uh, including or computing the function for intermediate values. So I'm going to define uh, another uh, set of x values. I'm going to call that little x, and I just want um, I'm going to use a numpy function here, and that is going to generate um, a lot of points between 
to 0 and 9. So let's just get 100 points, right? And then I'm going to plot Uh, oops, I'm going to now plot values predicted with this new uh, set of x coordinates, small x. And let's see, I got an error. Um, oh, of course, I should use a small x here, sorry. Okay, and so you can clearly see here that there is some overfitting, right? Um, that the, the real function probably does not look like that at all, right? Um, and so because I have uh, so many terms in my expansion, right, it can now do a lot of crazy things to ensure that the line goes exactly to the points, right? So even, and that, lives, that gives us a very small error, but obviously, of course, this is not what we want if we want to predict other points, let's say, in this area here or in this area here. Right, so I can't just uh, the, the optimum function is not just one that has the smallest uh, L two loss, and so the the question is now how to how to detect that right? Because how do you so it's 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 fairly clear in a one dimensional case where you can plot it like this, um, and and just see that it's wrong right? But but what do you do in in, in more complicated cases? Uh, and so that's uh, that's what I wanna that's what I wanna show next. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide my uh, data set up to a training up into a training set uh, and a validation set. So so let me let me show you uh, how to do that. So um, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to uh, pick some points uh, for the validation set and the test set, and I'm gonna so, so I'm gonna just write this first, and then explain it. So I'm gonna make an array, uh, a NumPy array, and uh, that's gonna be an array of, of true and false. So true means I'm gonna uh, include this point, the first point, and false means I'm not gonna include it. So Let me just, so I'm going to have to define this for each point. Let me just quickly put in a lot of trues. Uh, I have, uh, let me see. Uh, let me just see how many, for example, x values I have. Uh, I just want to know the number, so I can, that's 10. And oh, okay, I got lucky there. So now there's there's exactly uh, ten here, and I'm gonna now say that some of these I don't want in my training set. Uh, so I'm gonna pick this one and this one here. So. And now I'm going to define, uh, actually let me move this up here. I'm going to find a training set. And so this is these, this, these are the values I'm going to use to train the model, to find the weights. Um, and so to do that, I'm going to Define a training subset, um, uh, from the data here, using my pick array. So, if I print out the training set, let's see. 
Okay, so as you can see here now, um, right, I'm missing number eight here and I'm missing number five, right? And so that's exactly these two here that I'm missing. Okay, and so I can also, um, so I can now split this up uh, into x and y. Okay, and so I can do exactly now the same for the validation set. So So validation here, and now I want to reverse the picking order, right? So now I just, here I just want the two points here, okay? And so I can um, reverse this uh, by using this squiggly line here. So it, it looks like a straight line, but it's actually uh, a squiggly, a squiggly line. So uh, it's all called a tilde in English, so if you have trouble seeing exactly what it is, then, then have a look at the uh, have, have a look at Google tilde uh, and, and copy that in. Okay, so this is going to be my validation set and I'm going to get this from validation. And just to make sure that works here, I'm just going to print out uh, validation here. Right, and so these are the two points here I'm going to use uh, to validate the data. Okay, so what is all this good for? Okay, so what I'm going to do now is when I get my weights, right, I'm going to get this from my training set. Okay, and so my y predicted here is going to be y predicted for the training set, and I'm going to use um, the training data for that. And so that means I get an error for the training. And I can print that out. Okay, so um, actually, so let's, let's start with that. Oh, of course, I have to use the training here. Okay, and so now you can see, right, that um, I get, of course, I get a slightly different fit because I'm fitting to fewer points, right? And for the points here that I haven't used in the fit, right, I'm going to get an enormous uh, deviation. Okay, so right. So what I can, in order to demonstrate this now, I can um, copy this and compute the same thing for the validation. All right, so I can put a that, that basically gives me a number for how uh, how bad this is. So change that here, change that here, and change that here, and so forth. Uh, what did I miss? Okay, right, so you can see, so this here you can obviously see when you look at it, right, that there's a big error here for this point which you uh, can compute, it's, it's, it's okay here, right? And so the, the error in your training set uh, is still quite small, but the error in your validation set, right, is now, is now enormous. Okay, so you, can, so you can see from the data, right, from your entire data by splitting, by keeping, saving some of these numbers as a validation set, right, you can now use them to show um, that you've overfitted. Okay, and so I can now change, 
right? I, I can, for example, go back here and use a linear uh, regression, right? And as you can see now, so, so that the, the error for the training set and the validation set are very, very similar, right? I'm not making uh, much larger errors for my validation set. And so uh, basically what I should do now is, is, is compare the error for my training and my validation set. And then I should pick uh, the model, so the, the, the value here, I should pick the one that gives me the lowest error for the validation set and not the training set. And, and this is something called early stopping. Uh, so let me just uh, demonstrate that. All right, so, so I now want to uh, compute all of this uh, for different values here. Uh, right, so let me call this n and then I can now compute this um, for n equals 1 to 10. So it, it will, uh, so this will basically give me 1 through 9, right? Because remember in, a, in the range uh, definition, this has to be 1 higher than, than what you want. Okay, so right, all of this Right, it's now going to be computed for n equals 1, 2, 3, uh, all the way up to 9. So, and uh, instead of printing it out, it's, it's probably better just to, uh, to plot it. So, I'm going to save uh, my L2 error uh, for 10 equals 4, the training set, and the validation set like this. So rather than printing it out, um, I'm going to append it to the list. Uh, that's one too many, I guess. And I'm going to do the same thing here. And I'm going to call this validation. And uh, I guess I don't, I don't need this right now, so I'm going to comment that out. And now I want to plot um, these values. So actually, let me just show you where I'm headed by printing them out. All right, so I'm going to print this out and printing this out so right so you can see the values are very similar here right and then this value here starts to become very different from this value right but it's going to be much clearer if i actually plot it All right so on my x axis i want my different values of n uh, so that's this and right, I want to plot this, the training, and now I'm going to end the validation. Okay, I get some errors here. Again, don't, don't worry about that. Right, so as you can see here, um, right, the, oh, I should, probably label uh, so you can see what's what. So let me label that uh, label this training and label this validation. And so then I have to also plot the legend. So you can see that the uh, training loss and the validation loss are starting to diverge around five. Now it's actually a little, this, this thing just sort of screws up the scale. So uh, let's try to plot this um, from, uh, let's just go up to five here and 
let's see. Ah, okay, so you can see here at this point, um, the error for the validation is the lowest. So I actually want to use an n value of 4. That is, that is the best um, model for this particular combination of training and validation. And so let's, let's uh, try to plot and see what that looks like. So if I put 5 in here, right, then the last model that it'll train uh, will have n equal to 4. So uh, let's uncomment this. Uh, let's print out n uh, to just make sure that it's actually 4 uh, that we're plotting for. And then uh, we're going to plot this. Uh, Plot the model, oh, so this, so, and now we want uh, separate scatter plots for the training um, and the validation. So here, and we want, uh, we have Y predicted uh, that's for the validation, so that's what we want to, uh, sorry, for the, yeah, what do we want to plot here? Um, yeah, we want to use the training because that's what we used uh, to get the parameters. Uh, and let's see. Is that everything? Let's try to see what that looks like. Right, so we're doing it for four. Right, you can see now that the the, the blue line, uh, which is uh, just plotted for the training set, which are the blue points, right, matches quite well with the yellow line, uh, which is for all the points in between. And you can see that the error is actually quite small for the points. Uh, that were not used to train the model, right? And so that's exactly what you want to see in a model.